Welcome to Microeconomics for International Management, that's lecture 8, Long Run Theory of Production. This is the topic of our lecture for today. As you may remember from the last part of our previous lecture, this long run approach to production function offers much more possibilities. Long run decisions can uh, result in economies of scale, can result in location choice and technology cho choice as well. So it is kind of important that we understand. It. One uh, initial remark is, if you want to understand this part, if you want to understand long run uh, production function, uh, be sure that you understand uh, our lecture on consumer choice theory because there are many analogies here so you, you can find it pretty helpful in understanding the, the current lecture. We will start our lecture with the concept of so-called isoquant. Iso, this prefix means the same. Isoquant is about the same quantity. Isoquant is a curve and as a curve it is also a collection of points and they all have something in common. What they have in common is they are all combinations of labor and capital that allow to produce the same output. So we could say that um, actually every point in the isoquant represents a certain technology, a certain mixture, a certain proportion between uh, labor and capital. So this is a set of different technologies, but they all allow to produce the same output, the same quantity. You could say that this is analogical to indifference curve. Uh, when you look at indifference curve, you say, well, this is a line where all the points represent the same value to consumer. Right? The happiness of consumer is the same, whether it is created uh, by Haribo bears and MMMs in different proportions. Right? So when you look at producer, you could say, uh, isoquant allows to produce a certain output and shows all possibilities, all technologies that can be used to achieve that. So this is the graphical representation of an isoquant. So you can see we've got two axes because we've got two resources here, two variables, labor, right, on the horizontal axis and capital on the vertical one. And this is the collection, this curve here is the collection of all the points that allow you to produce a given output, right? And I will kind of show you three points here. These are just three points out of many that are in this curve here. The three points, uh, and these are three technologies here. The first technology requires quite a lot of capital, that's K1, and just a little of labor, L1, and it allows to produce a certain output. Then we can consider a different technology, technology number two, and this technology number two is based on less capital, K2, and more labor, L2, when compared to the, the first one, right? We can think of the third technology, right? Technology number three, in my case here, is just a little bit of capital, K3, and quite a lot of labor, L3, right? So you can see one technology that is highly capital intensive, that's the first one. You can see a technology that is highly labor intensive, that's number three, and something in between that doesn't require that much of capital and that much of uh, labor, it's somewhere in, in between, right? And you can create 
a map of isoquants, right? So you can create several isoquants which allow you to produce different output. So when you look at the first curve, Q1, all the points on this curve are technologies, different proportions between K and L, capital and labor. The different proportions, but they all, whichever you choose, they will let you produce just Q1. Uh, you could produce more, like Q2, if you are on the next isoquant, right? So if you use the next isoquant, this next isoquant shows you how much capital and how much labor you need to produce Q2. And here again, you've got many technologies, many possible proportions between K and L, and they all lead to Q2 production. So we could say if the goal of the producer is to produce as much as it is possible, uh, then obviously Q1 is not very attractive. And even Q2 is not that attractive because the most attractive out of those three is Q3, which allows you to produce most, right? So this is the biggest production here for Q3. And if we think of a producer, well, naturally, producer should focus on the highest possible production, right? Remember, producer does not mean manager. Uh, the biggest production does have, doesn't have to be the same as the biggest profit bringing production. So uh, be careful here, right? We are just thinking about production, how to produce, how to produce uh, as much as we, as we can. What happens if we change technology? Uh, with this graph here, we show what happens when we change technology, and we also introduce the concept of marginal rate of technical substitution. So we refer again to the idea that capital and labor are substitute. Right? When you change technology, you use them as substitute. You substitute labor with capital or capital with labor. In our case, we want to move from a capital-intensive technology to more labor-intensive technology. So we do it by decreasing the capital and increasing the labor that we use. But to be on the same isoquant, so that we move just from one point to another, we must ensure that Q, the output, is constant. So we will change capital and labor, but in such a way to keep Q unchanged, constant. All right, if we employ less capital, this will certainly lower the production because each unit of capital has some marginal productivity. So this marginal product of capital, MPK, would tell us how much we lose by giving up one additional unit of capital. And there are some units that we give up, right? But some units, this is this delta K. So delta K times marginal product of capital tells us how much of production we would lose by lowering the capital that we employ. Right? But since production was supposed to stay the same, we increase the labor. So what we lose in terms of production by lowering capital, we gain by increasing labor. So how much production do we gain by increasing labor? Well, it depends on how many units of labor we increase. So this is delta L. And how productive labor is, marginal productivity of labor, right? So as you can see, this decrease on the side of capital, delta K times marginal uh, product of capital must be equal to what we gain from labor, which is delta L times marginal product of labor. We can use this equation to 
find the slope of Isaac 1 and the slope of Isaac 1, the delta k over delta L, as you can see here, is marginal rate of technical substitution. This marginal rate of technical substitution is minus MPL divided by MPK. Marginal rate of technical substitution is simply the amount of capital by which total amount of capital must be increased in order to maintain output on unchanged level when labor is decreased by one unit, right? So we decrease labor by one unit and we see how much of capital we need to add in order to keep this unchanged, production unchanged. Okay, and again, you may uh, see the analogy, this marginal rate of technical substitution is pretty much similar to the concept of marginal rate of substitution, which we know from uh, the theory of consumer choice, right, in difference curves. In case of consumers, it was substituting one good with another to keep the level of happiness at the same level and here this is replacing labor by capital or capital by labor while keeping the same level of production. And again we can find some um, exemplary isoquant curves that are not so general like the ones that I showed to you so you've got constant marginal uh, rate of technical substitution if you could uh, have a constant proportion between capital and labor, constant slope, constant marginal uh, rate of technical substitution, or some fixed proportions, right? There are some uh, ways of producing things that require fixed proportions. So, for instance, when you want to dig something, like manually dig, not, not with the use of a digger, then you need one person, so L is one, and you need one shovel, which is one on the capital axis, right? And that allows you to dig one person and a shovel, right? And you can add more shovels, but it wouldn't change anything. I mean, you stay on the same isoc one because one person cannot dig with three shovels, right? So increasing capital without increase, increasing labor doesn't change anything. Or you can give one shovel and five people, five people cannot use one shovel, right? So this is one person, one shovel, and it's digging, right? And if you want to dig more, what you need is two people and two shovels. And that allows you actually to dig more. So that would be another isoquant, right? So this is about fixed proportion.